battery did not survive the bad rectifier. Here's the resting voltage, 12.22, not good, 12.3 is often considered the minimum, so I'll turn it on. So that's the ignition on, yeah, it's dropping rapidly. Ah, the old click of death, beautiful, new battery time. Right, new battery just arrived. This is the Deltran battery over here. Uh, they charge it to 70%, so it only needs a bit more of a charge. This time around, I actually bought a triple charger to go with it, so I have two of these now. I'm just going to use the alligator clip, so I won't wire it in, but you can. They send you one where you can just wire it in, and then there's a standard connection. Just connect it to that, and off you go if you want to wire it in. Uh, so what you get is the battery, the terminal nuts, whole crap load of spaces because when you <laughs> put the battery next to the lead acid lump oh my god, there it is I'm going to turn on the scales here oh, gone to zero, alright, let's put this lump on oh, it's in ounces, 134 ounces Take him off, put the Deltran on, oh, 28 ounces, hmm, I'm going to let somebody else do the math on that. One of the features I like about the uh, Deltran is they put four posts on, so you've got two negative posts, two positive posts, and they give you a little cover cap so you can, the one you don't use you can put on the negative, and you, then you tape it down, especially the uh, positive cap, make sure it doesn't come off. But if like this battery, you see the positives on the left, negatives on the right. Oh no, it's backwards. Well, you just turn it round. Bazinga, you've got it. No problem. And it doesn't matter which way up this goes because there's no acid in it. Well, I think that picture is about all you need to show you how to install it, right? I don't think you need anything more than that. One thing I do have though, um, so I've got this piece of foam, this is what they make uh, the foam and chicken wire houses out of silvered on one side to make it kind of waterproof you get a chunk of this at Home Depot and really easy to cut, I mean super easy and it's the same stuff your crash helmet's made of too, it's white foam so yeah, it'll work use that for the main spaces and then use these things to uh, absorb shock they're sticky on one side, you peel the tape off and uh, you can stick it down. Good. Right, battery's on charge. Uh, 13 and a half volts right now. We'll see what it goes up to. Well, that was fast. Half an hour max. And it looks like it's fully charged. Got a voltage reading of 13 and a half, a little over. It's kind of like that when we started. Interesting. So I want to make the, um, the spacer I put in a nice snug fit in the bottom. So I've got three and a half inches there. And this way it looks a lot like five and three quarters to me. Okay, the nice thing about this foam is it just cuts so easily. I'm going to use this pretty vicious looking saw. I'll probably get through this in about one or two cuts. Okay, I exaggerated a bit. It took um, three cuts for each one. So amazingly, this uh, inch and a half thickness of the foam has put the battery, oh, it's close enough, you know, right about the same level. So that's working out a tree. There's a little bit on the sides, there's a total of this much gap I've got to fill in. I'll probably use the uh, rubber spacers for that, but there's going to be some gap here I need to account for. I'm not sure I want to use that as all rubber, so I'm going to see if I can do that with a bit of this foam too. Okay, let's see how the foam block fits. If you don't like that squeaky noise foam makes, too bad. There it is, nice tight fit. And that is actually tight. I've just tried pulling it out, and it's, it's kind of tricky to pull out. So the next spacer I want to make is going to fit behind the battery, push the battery forward a bit, because the connections are towards the front. So I'm going to put the spacer in behind. So it's going to be five and, a, five and three quarters width. And I'm going to make it three inches high, 
so it's just below the level of the bolt-on bits and then the thickness I have to make sure so it's two and a half inches and the gap in here is still three and a half inches that didn't change so there's a one inch gap to make up but I want to use these foam thingies on the front to help isolate vibration so the battery's not hard against the front edge. They are a quarter of an inch each. So the piece of foam I need to make is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm going to have to make it to that size. Which means cutting it widthways along here. Uh, easy. Uh, here's how easy that foam is to cut. I'm going to do it right here. Stick it off. It's messy. And it's squeaky. I've just got to cut through the mylar bit on the back. Too easy. Okay, so here's the spacers I'm using. I can put two spacers in this side, two of the thin ones. Two thin ones here seems to be a good fit. This fat one is a bit on the thick side. It's the equivalent of three of these. Um, so I may just trim take one of these and trim it off because you only get six of these in the box these thin ones so I may just take that and trim it off a little bit and then again on this side I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, I'll probably just put one in there even though it's a gap even though it's gonna leave a gap I don't think it's gonna be a problem because this thing isn't gonna move once it's in and it'll have some rubber to bounce up against okay I think I got them sorted let me go cut this one and we should be ready for the final install so I've got the spacers on it now. Seems to be a nice snug fit fore and aft. It's not rocking around much. So should be a good fit. Right, these are the nuts. They even gave you little foam spacers on the bottom of the nuts. That's nice. So that you not you know you always catch the threads on them. Okay. Ready to install. Okay, a little bit of white lithium grease on the on the terminals just to slow the corrosion rate down. Got a nice classy finish here on the battery terminals I'm not using duct tape just to hold those red plastic bits on make sure they don't come off you can use RTV if you want that will help Let's stick them on I'm just going with the classy version and for the classy coup de gras I'm using a cartel rubber band to hold the battery down I find the uh, original rubber bands here in Phoenix uh, they just rot away so fast even the brand new ones you get out of the store they're just useless they're on for about six months dead gone so yeah you can get these in almost anywhere bag of coffee and uh, hold it down okay well now's the moment of truth will this tiny little battery start to bite so got the fuel on ignition on i might have to play with the choke Eyes up easily. Do it again. <laughs>